Hello everyone, I'm Jia Liang Han from Peking University. Today, I will share with you our recent work on device deep learning for privacy-preserving sequential recommendation in mobile commerce. Sequential recommendation learns sequential interests within user historical interaction behaviors. It is considered to be a promising way of providing better user experience in mobile commerce because the user interactions on mobile devices are usually fragmented and momentary and sequential recommendation can effectively work on a small scale of data. However, the enforcement of GDPR and CCPA may make sequential recommendation no longer work. The reason is that current sequential recommendation in mobile commerce usually rely on the data that are not related to the core business of mobile commerce, such as clicking on the items and draw time on pages. As a result, users may not allow the recommender to use their interaction data for privacy concerns. Although there have been efforts on privacy preserving deep learning techniques, such as shared models, multi-party computation, transformation, partial sharing, model splitting, and encryption, the risks of privacy leakage still exist because those approaches require to send intermediate results out of the user's devices, and the intermediate results could be used to inform user's identities and interests. As a result, users may still refuse the recommender to use their data, even encrypt or disturbed. How can we reassure the users that the recommenders have no or least a privacy leakage? A most straightforward answer is to make sure that no data, whether raw data or intermediate results, are sent out of the devices during recommendation. First, we train an RN-based global re recommendation model with existing interaction behavior data of all users collected before GDPR on the cloud and push the model, uh, global model to individual devices. Second, we perform fine tuning over an RN based personal recommendation module with interaction behavior data of each user collected before GDPR on her own device and extract a, a unique user specific embedding from her personal module. Third, we combine the latent information of the user embedding and item embeddings to complete the recommendation process. However, due to the computation limitation, deploying deep learning based applications on mobile devices faces special challenges. To make deep breath practical, we address two technical issues on mobile devices. In other words, network overhead and computational overhead. To reduce network overhead, we adopt lasso regression or L1 regularization to specify the item embeddings. To reduce computational overhead on devices, we adopt an AGP to comprise both required unit layers and fully connected layers. This is the architecture of DeepRack. Next, we will introduce essential modules of DeepRack, beginning with the filtering module. To reduce the computational overhead of ranking the inner products of a given user embedding and item embeddings, and to reduce the network overhead of putting item embeddings from the cloud, we use a k-nearest neighbor item-based collaborative filtering module to extract an item candidate set from all items. For the privacy-preserving purpose, we use business necessary data, in other words, purchasing behaviors, to estimate the probability of quick behaviors that cannot be uploaded due to GDPR. We only use the filtering module for guidelines and obtain an item candidate set from all the items. Next, we will introduce the recommendation module. We use a GRU-based neural network to model the sequential information behind the historical interaction behaviors and then extract the user embeddings. The, the detail of the neural network structure of DeepRack is shown in the figure. The input of the module is a sequence of actual items in one hot encoding, which are projected into low-dimensional depth embeddings through the embedding layer. To reduce network overhead, the desk embedding is then passed into a specificity layer. After that, the sequence of item embeddings is passed into one of several GIU layers. The output of the GIU layers re represents the user's current items of interest, namely the user embedding. Finally, the user embedding is passed into one of several feedforward layers to output the scores of actual items and the user that the user is likely to click next. To reduce network overhead between the cloud and the devices, we perform lasso regression to specify item embeddings of the item candidate set. Lasso regression extracts the principal information from raw embeddings through sparse encoding. 
To reduce the computational overhead of training personal modules on devices, we perform an automated gradual burner. AGP assigns weights satisfying a certain criteria to zero and those trimmed weights will be shut down permanently and not participate in backpropagation. The main idea of AGP is to initially pull the weights rapidly and gradually uh, reduce the number of pulled weights. To evaluate the performance of the DBRAC and baselines, we use a public user behavior dataset from Taobao, which contains nearly 1 million users and nearly 100 million behaviors from November 25 to December 3, 2017. To, to simulate the scenario of GDPR, we manually set a GDPR deadline at 0 o'clock on December 1, after which click data can only be used to fine-tune a personal model on devices. To evaluate the performance of the crack, we manually set a training deadline at 0 o'clock on December 3, after which click data can only be used to test. To simulate the code start scenario that some new users register after GDPR, we manually partition users into old users and new users by the average of 10 steps of their clicks. New users appear themselves after GDPR deadline, and the new user's click can only be used to train her personal module. Old users' clicks are used to train both the global module and their personal modules. After the above filtering and partitions, the scale of the dataset is shown in the table. We partition the whole procedure into three phases, global training, personal training, and testing by the GDPR deadline and the testing deadline. DeepRack trains the global module with all users' privacy-sensitive data before the GDPR deadline and fine-tunes a personal module for each user with her privacy-sensitive data before the training deadline, which, sati which satisfies the requirements of GDPR. The global and mo uh, personal module trains a global module and fine-tunes a personal module for each user with all users' privacy-sensitive data before the training deadline, which does not satisfy the requirements of GDPR. The only the global module only trains a per, uh, only trains a global module for all users with all users' privacy sensitive data before the training deadline, which is a training schedule for almost all SATA sequ sequential recommenders, as far as we are concerned. Finally, the only personal module only trains a personal module for each user with her privacy sensitive data before the uh, training deadline. We evaluate the effectiveness of the global module and the personal modules. In the figure, we show that the learning curve of deep rack and baselines on the testing set. We notice that the only personal modules suffer poor accuracy because um, single user's training data are so few that her personal module is easy to overfit and converges to a, a local optimum point. And deep rack uh, performs better than the only global module because it both take advantage of the Go, uh, the common click pattern of all users and mines a user's unique click pattern. Although the global and personal modules actually predict the, the next click item slightly better than DeepRec, uh, they are not suitable for a privacy preserving scenario. To answer the question whether only business necessary data, in other words, purchasing behaviors are enough to predict the next click item, we train our model with only business necessary data, only uh, privacy sensitive data, and both of them. As shown in the figure, the accuracy of the model trained with only, uh, privacy, sens with only privacy sensitive data is close to that of the crack. However, the accuracy of the model trained with only business necessary data is much, is much lower than that of the crack. To measure how GDPR deadline, in other words, the size of the global training set affects accuracy. We skill both the period of the global training set and the personal training set by ranging the GDPR deadline from 0 o'clock on the first day to the midnight on the last day of the training set. The results show that from the uh, 0 day to 6 day global training, the accuracy increases. Uh, well, from the 6 day to 8 day global training, the accuracy drops. The reason why the accuracy increases is that uh, more behavior data used for global training can better learn the common pattern of all users and avoid uh, overfitting. And the reason why the accuracy drops is that personal training is not long enough to fully mine a user's unique uh, click pattern. To measure the generalization of deep rack on new users, we measure the accuracy of old users and new users as shown in the figure. Surprisingly, the results show that although new users' interaction behaviors are not uploaded or used for global training, the accuracy of new users is close to that of old users. 
Personal training is not supposed to be performed once new user item interactions appear on devices, because the model devices are not always idle and available for training. On the other hand, intuitively, if the personal module is not updated for a long time, the accuracy is likely to drop. To measure how up, uh, update intervals influence the accuracy, we scale the size of mini batch during personal training from 25 to 200. As shown in the figure, within a relatively wide range, the update intervals of fine tuning personal modules hardly influenced accuracy. There are many two parts of network overhead between the code and the device. On the one hand, the device needs to download the item candidate site. On the other hand, the, the device needs to download the global module. To measure how spatility of item embeddings affects the accuracy, we scale the target spatility of the embeddings from 0 to 90%. As shown in the figure, as the spatility of item embeddings increases, the accuracy drops slowly, which encourages us to choose an aggressive embedding spatility of 90% to reduce network overhead. To measure how spatility of the global module affects accuracy, we scale the target spatility of the global module from 0 to 90%. As shown in the figure, as the spatility of the model increases, the accuracy drops slowly, which encourages us to choose an aggressive model spatility of 80% to reduce the network overhead. To measure how the size of the item candidate set affects the accuracy, we scale the proportion of the candidate set over all items. As shown in the figure, the accuracy drops rapidly as the candidate set becomes smaller. Hence, we carefully choose a conservative proportion of 10% to balance network overhead and accuracy. We use several techniques to make on-device training more feasible and less resource-consuming, including AGP, item embedding, and embedding spacity. To evaluate how each technique affects the feasibility and computational overhead of on-device training, we conduct several ablation experiments on deep track. As shown in the table, the break without item embedding cannot be deployed on mobile devices because the runtime memory needs to train a, mo a personal module is dramatically beyond that of middle-class mobile devices. Besides, AGP helps to boost save time, training time and uh, reduce the size of downloaded global module. To summarize this study, we have shown that GDPR affects the deployment of SATA sequential recommenders even with the help of privacy-preserving deep learning techniques. On device training can help prevent raw data or intermediate data results from being uploaded. Third, AGP and lasso regression can be applied to make on device training more feasible and less results consuming. That's all. Thank you for your attention.